and welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this spotlight session, More Insights' Pat Moorhead sits down with Global Foundry CEO Tom Caulfield for the second straight year. Their conversation covered the state of the semiconductor industry and the forces at play that are driving pretty significant change on a global scale. This is one conversation I definitely don't want to miss. Let's get right to it. Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for another 6.5 Summit 2021 segment. And I am so pleased to introduce and welcome for his second straight year. Tom Caulfield, CEO of Global Boundaries. Tom, how are you? Hey, Pat. Really good. Hey, thanks for having me back for the second year. This is a uh, Absolutely. Be you know, uh, you knocked it out. A lot of, uh, a lot of video views and our uh, listeners and viewers wanted more. We wanted more Tom. So here we are. <laughs> uh, Tom, it's hard to uh, uh, read a, a, a semiconductor article or watch a segment on TV without seeing your face or seeing one of your quotes out there. You have been just pervasive uh, in talking about uh, semiconductor uh, competitiveness. But uh, if we could, uh, let's just start at the top. Um, there's a chip shortage, uh, and whether it's cars, PCs, Chromebooks, uh, TVs, uh, 5G uh, infrastructure, uh, there is a chip shortage. and where is the chip shortage coming from? And how did we get into this uh, supply and demand uh, Im imbalance? And I think uh, most importantly, what people want to know is uh, what is Global Foundries going to do about it? Well, first, uh, I, I think irrespective of it's, if it's me talking about it or not, uh, you know, can you imagine three years ago if someone told you uh, every day, whatever your newsfeed, the Internet, print, that every day you would find at least one or two articles on the chip shortage or the chip industry. You would have said, come on, that's, that happens every year we get an article. And I guess maybe it takes you know, kind of a crisis to recognize how integral something is. And in this particular case, the chip industry is, is so integral in the, to a $91 trillion world economy. And it's not until you, see a, you have a crisis that it becomes really important for everybody to, to understand it. So, so how did we get here? You know, it's like everything else. It just doesn't happen overnight. It's a, it's a confluence of a number of events. And usually they start a lot further back and it builds. And then maybe there's a catalyst that will accelerate it. So let me, let me tell you my view of the world. And, and by the way, um, I, I, I always felt that we would get to this imbalance of supply uh, and demand because of the seat that we sit in right? as, as a supplier of, of semiconductors and looking at the where markets were growing and where investments were not being made, that eventually we would we would cross the Rubicon and have less supply to demand. I think what we're seeing is it's it's happened a lot sooner and a lot more dramatic. But I think it really started with these mobile devices. And, and why is that? You know, these mobile devices created a singularity of a device for us as, as a society, as businesses, that it had everything for us. It was feature rich. It had cameras for pictures. It had audio. It had chips to connect to, the, to both Wi-Fi and cell towers. So we were always connected. It had the ability to do secure transactions. It had the ability for us to communicate to other devices. It's these rich features that started to make this, wow, I could do so much more with the digital transformation. I could do so much more with technology. The whole reason we have the internet of things is because we had now had a device that we can use, do something with all our devices being connected. What would I care if my thermostat was connected to, in my house to the internet. If I still had to roll out of bed, walk downstairs and change the temperature setting up. But now I had a device that I can do all this. And what happened is fundamentally our industry went you know, in an evolutionary way and maybe an explosive way now from a compute centric deployment of semiconductors, everything around compute to a pervasive deployment. In fact, that pervasive deployment of semiconductors is 70% of the market where the traditional compute following Moore's law now into single digit nanometers is 30% of the market. And we all know most of the investments in capacity have all been addressing, you know, very significant but and necessary, but not sufficient part of the market, which is that compute center. 
And so what happened is we, this was a, a, a journey, a date with destiny this industry was going to have. COVID comes, the digital transformation becomes accelerated, what we talked about last year, and it pulls in that intersection point and it makes the mismatch that much higher. Yeah, the irony, in my mind, that's the, the best is... explanation I've heard of it, just because it happens to be mine, because uh, <laughs> it, it pulls everything together. Yeah, the irony is incredible, Tom. And I remember, uh, listen, uh, software is eating the world uh, and it still eats the world. But I always said that software has to run on something. Uh, and as we've seen, uh, some of the large platform players are getting strategic with silicon, so strategic that they're they have their own development teams uh, out there. And the and, th and that to me says people have learned that they can use silicon to be strategic, not just to ship a generic uh, widget uh, out there. And I I do agree with you that sometimes it does take. Uh, a, a challenge is out there to get us to where we we need uh, uh, to go. So, um, are you planning to you're planning to build more fabs? Uh, and is, is that a global foundry solution uh, to to the problem? Yeah, I think uh, there's a couple of things here. There's always what's, what, what what can we do tactically and what we can do strategically. You know, tactically we're trying to get as you know as much capacity on as we can. Uh, we have. Unfortunately, a lot more demand today than we can handle for our customers, and we're doing the best we can. For us, it means sole source business, which is a big part of our business, where we're, we're the only uh, uh, foundry that can make that, that we, we made it as a proprietary offering to our customers, and, and they chose it because it created great differentiation for them and the products they make. We have to service that first and foremost and do as best we can. I think it's more about what this inflection point is going to change. Look, we're a half a trillion dollar industry, and whether you believe it's six, eight, or 10 years, we're growing to a trillion dollars. And this industry could do two things. We could say, hey, stick a fork in us, we're done. Let's stay at a half a trillion dollars, milk our assets, and, 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 and do the best we can. Or we could say, no, we need to go grow as a trillion dollar industry. The only way we grow is we need more manufacturing capacity. We need it everywhere, analog, digital, RF, single digit nanometer. And the only way we can do that is the economics of foundry investment and capacity that got us to a half a trillion dollar industry cannot get us to a trillion. And it's gonna be more partnership. Partnerships with between the foundry and the fabulous customers in the following way. It's about certainty, profitability, and durability. Let me say the, the middle one first, profitability. Profitability is just about return on invested capital. The economics for adding capacity have to work for the ecosystem for the fabulous, for the family. So we have to find a better way of doing that. Uh, we want certainty. If you're gonna make investments, this build it and they shall come is, is, it can't happen anymore. It's just too risky for everybody. So we need, all of us in the semi industry have to get certainty around the capacity we're gonna build and the commitment to it. It's not enough just to, just to forecast, it's owning that forecast, right? And then the last thing, durability. Let's make sure when we're adding capacity, it's in areas and segments that we really have strong belief in that we can be differentiated. And I will tell you over the first uh, five months of this year, GF has really done, a, a, I think a remarkable job working with our customers in partnership to create these partnership models to go give security supply and, and real output over the you know, next three, four, five years in partnership to create capacity that our customers need. And I think that is the model that will get us from a half a trillion dollars to a trillion dollar industry. Yeah, the certainty. Uh, I don't know if I've been doing this as long as you have, but I guess over 30 years, um, but always inter strong, either working for chip companies or close collaboration with chip companies. And that certainty, the idea that you would lay down 10 billion dollars, uh, not knowing what the end result was going to be with a high degree of confidence. Uh, it was it was like Las Vegas uh, and and big risks and what, one of the things that that I'm seeing and I've seen even out of Global Foundries is those companies that might have been two or three clicks down the value chain from you uh, directly interacting with you and I saw I saw this even coming out of the auto industry I think I even talked to auto manufacturers that said we need to be closer to the people who. Uh, manufacturer are semiconductors. And I think that's one of the big learnings uh, that I've seen. So uh, Tom, 
So much has happened uh, in the last year uh, when, when we had you on here. Uh, you talked about uh, the pandemic and different geopolitical forces uh, out there. Uh, you know, in addition, here we are now, uh, we can't get enough. Put a focus on the criticality of the semiconductor industry uh, that you know you had said and I had said is driving the digital transformation out there. So from where you sit, Tom, uh, what is the current landscape out there? I know you had talked about it uh, a little bit of what's going on. Have, this, have the same forces continued to affect the industry or has something big changed uh, over the last year? Um, <clears throat> so the, the geopolitical dimension has, has only grown. And I think uh, if we didn't have this crisis, you could, you could see it kind of plodding along. It's, it's a great thought, something we're going to have to get around and then you know, get to eventually and maybe do something about it. And now you have the, the big chip shortage that says, okay, we really need to get serious about it. And it's about uh, supply chain security. We have a highly concentrated industry in one part of the world, 70% 70, 70 of all foundries from one part of the world, uh, a very tiny part of the world. And you know, that creates risks in its own right, right? Um, we, we talk about uh, national security or sovereign security for regions. And, you know, there's economic security. I think that's the big, the, the, the big epiphany. The first two were kind of obvious, but to see how important semiconductors are in the world economy and when you don't have them, you know, the, the carnage it creates in different industries creates this, this impetus. We need to get this moving forward. And, you know, as you know, you know, GF has a global footprint. And a little bit back to your last question, uh, at, you know, we're getting to the point now where all the brick and mortar we have is full. And we will, you will see announcements coming from GF that we will start to add to the brick and mortar because we need to do our part in adding right. capacity to get this industry to a you know, $1 trillion industry. But geopolitically, there are partnership opportunities. You know, the Singapore, EDB, great partners with GF, and they will continue to be great partners with us as we continue to expand in that part of the world. Uh, just in the news yesterday, it looks like we're getting closer and closer to getting the CHIPS bill finally uh, funded. And you know, once that's off, there's, there's, a, there's a smart way of doing that. You know, and my advice to Washington has, has been very consistent. Uh, first and foremost, be ambitious. Don't, you're not going to impress anybody by going from 12% of worldwide <laughs> manufacturing to 14%, especially when 50% of the demand for the semiconductor industry is from U.S. headquartered companies. Be ambitious. Hey, in a decade, let's make that 20, 24%, right? Let's double it. Be thoughtful in, the in, in understanding that this industry is very broad. It's not one thing. It's not right. a 12,000 wafer a month fab in single digit nanometer that solves your problem. It's about analog, mixed signal, single digit nanometer, NAND, flash. Make sure you invest in a portfolio of technologies if you really want to have semiconductor, you know, sovereign security, national security, and economic uh, outcomes. And so the U.S. will get, will get to this point, and, 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 I, and I believe there will be a number of companies that will be able to leverage that and do their part and take a 12%, and let's drive this to 24%. And then, of course, in Europe, you know, we have a global, again, a global footprint, very big facility. In fact, it was our birthplace uh, when GF was born. It was a spin out from, from AMD, and that was our first facility. It's called Fab One in Dresden. And uh, to give you an idea of the kinds of investments we're making there, the, the the number of wafers we shipped in 2020 and the capacity we're adding that facility by the time we exit fourth quarter of 2022, and this is gated, by the way, by how fast we can get equipment installed and qualified. It's not because we don't want to run faster. That output of that facility run rate fourth quarter of 2022 will be two and a half times more than it was in all of 2020. To give you an idea of the rate of pace at which we need to add capacity. So geopolitically, the issue is still there. It's been elevated. Uh, to a higher level of, of, of crisis and, uh, and, and, and driving quicker actions. And I think the, uh, the proof of that is what you're seeing in the CHIPS bill. And we will, as a, as a, as a company, uh, continue to, to leverage the fact that we have a global footprint. It's a real feature for GF and to not add capacity in only one region, but all the regions we operate in. Yeah, Tom, I love the aggressive approach that you're taking. And as I said in, in your introduction, uh, it's it's hard to open up a uh, and kudos to you and, and your PR team. It's hard to read a intelligent article without 
uh, seeing you in, 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 in many of them. So, you know, hats off to you. And I do think we should go for it here. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to say go big or stay home, but let's, you know, I do think it's valuable to go home and also appreciate that, uh, other regions have the go big mentality as well. Uh, you talked about, uh, Singapore, you talked about, um, Western Europe, uh, and the United States. And everybody wants to make sure that they have the supply because silicon is strategic. Uh, I'm just going to keep saying that until uh, more people doesn't say that. No pushback for me, Pat. No pushback. Doesn't say that me. cloud and software aren't important, but let's just put these all. And 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 I said this in a recent Forbes article that when you align semiconductors, software, and the cloud, the real magic uh, happens out there. Uh, so, Tom. Uh, you had alluded to this a little bit before, but uh, I've heard you say this, that, that the industry is painting itself uh, in the corner. Uh, you know, this maniacal, crazy focus on single node scaling, single nanometer manufacturing. Uh, I, I think I know what you mean by that, but I want, I want, I want for the sake of our viewers and listeners uh, for you to explain uh, what you mean by that. And does it, create an opportunity for global foundries. Yeah, um, I'll get to that. Let me, you know, you, you, you mentioned it twice a little bit about me, GF, and the news on this issue. And, yeah. and, and, and look, let me not duck it. I think the reason why maybe we have to be the one talking, if there's a chip shortage, we, you, you need to go to the people who make the chips to talk about it, right? Exactly. You can be the spokesperson. And look, for, for an industry, I don't think it's fair for our industry to be the Kind of the crosshairs for everybody saying it's it's all because there aren't chips. We, we need people to understand our industry, so they understand what we're doing about it. And I think it's 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 as much that GF is an important part of that that industry, an important part of telling the story of what happened and what we're going to go do about it. And maybe it's more for me an obligation uh, to represent than uh, than uh, just because we're asked we talk about it. So you you know you brought it up twice, and I thought I would just address that. Yeah, look, the painting in the corner. And, and can I just just for the sake of the audience, I mean. Uh, the biggest shortage was not in single nanometer. The biggest shortage is 14, 28 uh, uh, 40, plus. 90, 65. Yeah, so, and, and people are, are, are missing that. And uh, strategic doesn't mean uh, bleeding edge. Strategic means anything that can, is required to deliver the holistic product uh, and service, which is a common, which is a, a combination. Of, of not only nanometer and geometries, but uh, tech, very important focused technologies out there, which Tom, I know uh, when it comes to 5G or, or uh, IoT, a lot of your focused areas, that's what's required to, to be most successful. Yeah, and let's get back to this, what I, what I talk about the industry painted itself into a corner. You know, when we were compute centric, that was, the lion's share of the innovation. It was to right. scale the transistor, make it half the size, twice the, the, the speed, and and that was the game. And then and when we started to see all these other rich features we needed, we went from a node-centric industry to a platform industry, where we take a, a node and add features to it, whether it's IP, device types, features like embedded memory, high voltage, low voltage. Uh, and, and it's those uh, attributes where we innovate every day and we have thousands of engineers that do this. And the last thing they want to hear is, well, you're not innovating if you're not making the smallest transistor. You know, we say we beg to differ. We're 70% of the market, as I spoke about before. And it's these features that are enabling the explosion of semiconductor deployment around the, the, around the, um, the globe. And I, and I think it's a very important element is we should talk about what got us here, a compute-centric industry. It's still an important leg of innovation to continue to scale. But more and more of what will drive this industry is the 70% of the market that's feature-rich, uh, application-requiring these kinds of solutions, right? That's right. It's really hard to, to ship any uh, smartphone or anything that requires RF uh, on, on even bleeding-edge or leading-edge technology. And, 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 and um, well, it's bleeding edge technology as, as some of the advanced techniques you've, you've added uh, to it, but just not single uh, nanometer nodes. And we're experiencing this uh, 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 right now. No, look, so, it's, 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 it's an important segment. 
you know, one of the challenges we have is, you know, once you cross the Rubicon to EV, uh, the cost point is really hard to do anything about. And you know, remember, EV is a proxy for quad patterning. And, and that's, that's expensive. To do one process, right. you have to do it four times. And EUV reduces the cost a little bit. Maybe it's, you know, 80%. Uh, uh, or 20% more cost effective. And so the use cases, the applications for that are coming smaller and smaller, but they're, 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 maybe the use cases are growing, but the volume is there in data centers and compute, very important part of the segment. But again, innovation has to happen everywhere if we're going to really drive the digital transformation and the wonderful things ahead for society and humankind that semiconductors can enable. So Tom, um, we're coming to an end here, but I wanted to give you the opportunity. Uh, the, the viewers of this are your customers, uh, your ecosystem, government officials, uh, VCs, uh, investors uh, here. Any, any final words you'd like to, to share uh, with the audience before I take us out? No, I'll just re re uh, you know, repeat a little bit in summary what I said before, and it's, it goes something like this. You know, there are, there are others, and you said it your words, you know, that was software is going to eat the world uh, and, and some of the feeling, well, a semiconductor, it ran its course. You know, I think this is now the golden age of semiconductors. I think the first 50 years kind of set the foundation for what we can become. And, and all the things we did to get us to a half a trillion dollar industry, the focus only on, on, on scaling, uh, the, the kinds of relationships in the ecosystem, the value capture of semi for what it creates for the world, all of that has to be rethought if we're going to get successfully from a half a trillion dollar industry to a trillion dollar industry. And I'm bullish. Um, I'm uh, uh, excited about the, what the next 50 years are going to bring uh, for this industry. I may not have all 50 left in me, but I'm going to, I'm going to stay as long as I can. Tom, I want to thank you for uh, spending time here uh, with us. Uh, really appreciate this. Uh, this is Pat Moorhead with more insights and strategy. Uh, Keep on tuning in. Uh, we literally have the most important companies in the technology ecosystem, including semiconductors, as, as part of our program. So please tune in there and thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.